Welcome back to another week in Bevy. This week we've got the Bevy Spooky Jam, which is an unofficial Bevy game jam for the spooky season. It starts on October 4th and runs until October 21st. The Bevy Spooky Jam is a casual game jam that the creator would like to turn into a monthly game jam if there's enough interest. We also see a number of Game Boy Jam submissions this week and the release of a new navigation mesh crate. But on to our first big topic, the Bevy Foundation is now a 501c3 public charity. That's right, this week the Bevy Foundation's federal 501c3 status in the U.S. was announced, which means donations are income tax exempt for the foundation, tax deductible for donators in the U.S., and employer donation matching programs become applicable. So definitely check to see if your employer will match your donation. This is a great step that aligns very well with the level of transparency that we've come to expect from the Bevy organization. And of course, if you want to read more of the specific details, definitely go check out the post. First up on the PRs this week, the Bevy Remote Protocol. As part of the ongoing editor work, the Bevy Remote Protocol landed for the first time in 14880. The Bevy Remote Protocol, or BRP, provides a JSON RPC style interface for querying running games. If you add the remote plugin, this currently allows you to query for entities with specific components and more. This includes querying for components and returning entities and components that match, spawning new entities with components, destroying entities, inserting or removing components on an entity, and reparenting entities. I assume the behavior list here will grow, but it's wonderful to have this merged. And this will be a strong driver for editor behaviors. Keeping with the general editor UI scenes work that's being done, the required components feature enables requiring certain components to also be added when adding specific other components. The demo in the original PR shows the difference between a button bundle, which has all of these components, and a button with some required components. 14964 migrates the Bevy Transform crate, while 15474 migrates visibility. This means that previously where you would spawn a bundle like the Transform bundle, you now only need to add the Transform component, and the required components functionality, which includes Global Transform in this case, will be automatically added. There is a long list of required components refactors like this that are still being debated or implemented, so expect more of this kind of refactor when 0.15 comes around. Notably, the concept of bundles is not going away, and these refactors are mostly about porting engine-level code. From required components to animation, in 15.282, the ability was introduced for animation clips to animate arbitrary properties. An example animation property implementation for the font size of a text section is included in this PR description. There's also some other animation related PRs that I'm expecting to land maybe over the next week or so, so look forward to that. And in 14920, a new run system cached API allows the running of systems like one-shot systems without first creating or saving the system ID. This provides some really nice ergonomic improvements and I'm really happy to see this PR land. It does seem like there might be some more work to make this the default style of one-shot rather than needing to store the system IDs, so We'll see how that lands in 0.15. And while 13.152 added function reflection, it really didn't make functions reflectable. Instead, it made it so that they can be called with reflected arguments and return reflected data. But the functions themselves could not be reflected. 15.205 rectifies this and enables dynamic function to actually be reflected. The disqualified crate was initiated by a community member and the crate was transferred into the Bevy maintainer ship this week. It was first used in Bevy in 15372 by that same community member. Disqualified lazily shortens a fully qualified type name to remove all module paths. The short name of a type is its full name as returned by core any type name, but with the prefix of all paths removed. For example, the short name of Alec Vec Vec containing a core option option U32 would be Vec option U32, as you might expect. This shortening is performed lazily and without allocation. 15.291 implements scrolling for Bevy UI. The implementation uses a new scroll position component, and it's really nice to see Bevy UI getting more features. 15.184 is related to system input references, which can be a little bit mind-bendy. This introduces the ability to create systems that take references as input. That means when piping or running systems, you can now use exclusive or shared references. The showcase in the PR does a pretty good job of showing off what this looks like, so definitely go check it out if this sounds like something that you want to make use of. And following on from that, in a similar vein, these non-consuming trigger functions on world get introduced in 14894. This introduces the ability to trigger observers for a specific event, while also reacting to the changes that observer code makes to the event struct. 
This involves passing an exclusive reference to the event as an argument to the new world trigger ref function, which will then run any observers watching for that event before returning to the code location that called trigger ref and allowing it to use the modified event data. This pattern of passing an event to a consumer, which then can modify the event before passing it back, is an established pattern in applications like the paper Minecraft server, where listeners can modify event data. And notably, this is a function on world, not on commands. And if you still feel like you need a little bit more of a motivation for this, definitely go read this comment that I'm showing on screen right here by AEC Socket, which covers the concrete use case, including example code. And 15.476 adds a new system param called single. In this PR, it was called query single, but got it renamed shortly after. Single is valid if exactly one matching entity exists. A variant written as option single is valid if zero or one matching entities exist. A new example in the ECS folder called fallible params shows off the new functionality. And of course, we've got Alice's merge train, which is a maintainer level view into the active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. And she always does a fantastic job with this. So if you're interested in what's going on, definitely go give this a read. And that brings us into our showcase. In this case, we've got some draw UI, which is showing off just some UI, which was built with vanilla bevy UI and some tweens. Here you can see even drag and drop working. And Jarl is just such a great looking game to me. I love seeing all the little touches. In our next showcase, Varg, which is a potentially temporary name, got game menus with localization support. This includes various resolution and scaling options, as well as the tentative title and logo. In RTL languages, the UI is reversed, and so are the key bindings. And Bevy No Standard is making progress. And here we see Bevy App and Bevy ECS working on bare metal. This example application is only running at about 2 FPS, but it's running in QEMU, or QEMU. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more Bevy No Standard, including potentially Bevy on the Playdate in the future. And the developers of Architect of Ruin are using this eGUI based character editor to bring all the spine, skeleton, attachment sprites, equipment, and color palettes together to test random character generation. They've already used it to build some new races out, including hobbits and dwarves. I'm a huge fan of little tools like this, to the point where I have a bunch of binaries in all my projects. And then we get into the GB Jam 12 entries with Sweet Escape. This means more Game Boy style graphics and an old school vibe. You can also view the game in a video on YouTube in addition to playing it on itch.io. And a bunch of systems came together to build this building building system, which is now coming together. Later on, we actually do see not just walls, but also floors. Our next showcase shows off a custom ECS scripting language that can now run and modify Bevy's game state to move a circle around. And in another GB Jam 12 entry, Redeath is a platformer in the style of Celeste. That is, it's a hardcore platformer. It's got an interesting mechanic in its dash and a great Game Boy-like aesthetic. This stylized rendering of Earth is slowly being turned into a game in the Discord thread and is somebody's project to learn how to work with Bevy. And the developer of this game is challenging themselves to make and finish small games quickly, approximately monthly. In this one, you optimize your orbital trajectory to avoid running out of fuel while defending the planet from incoming enemy ships. And Endeavor is a 3D space adventure where you can explore, gather, build, and battle your way through the unknown frontiers of deep space. The first free playtest of Endeavor is scheduled for October 14th. The game started life in Bevy 0.12 in 2023, before upgrading to 0 0.13 and 0 0.14. And this is a game called Mercator, or Mercator. I don't actually know, but it reminds me of the map projection. Mercator is a shopkeeping game where you craft items with workers, haggle for profit, and move goods via sail, and eventually wheel, across Asia, and eventually Africa and Europe, in the third century AD. The developer is looking for early access testers, so contact them in Discord if you're interested. And this one is really interesting because we'll see this crate later in crates. Project Harmonia migrated MPC navigation from oxidized navigation to Valu Navigator this week, which also means a switch from the classic A-star pathfinding to Pollyanna. And on into the crates now, we'll talk about Valu Navigator, which is a nav mesh crate that can integrate with Bevy and or Avian to produce dynamic navigation meshes. It features live nav mesh updates with obstacles from Bevy's AABBs, Bevy's Primitive Shapes, Avian 2D Obstacles, or Avian 3D Obstacles. It's easy to add new obstacle types with a trait to implement, 
Layers can be connected and updated independently, layers can overlap, and agent radius can be implemented so your pathfinding agents don't fall into a hole. And I do feel the need to say, since there is an FPS counter on the screen, I am running things like OBS, Blender, and other high-intensity uh, software like Photoshop, all at the same time as running this and recording the video. So don't take the FPS on my machine too seriously right now. And for our last crate, we're gonna talk about Bevy Submerge UI 0.1. Bevy Submerge UI is a UI plugin with Tailwind-like capabilities for Bevy, boasting nested UI components, Tailwind-like styling, scalable design, and custom utilities. If you're looking for a UI solution, maybe check this one out. And we've got one tutorial this week, which is low poly height map based terrain from Plane Meshes. This covers using noise to modify vertex position, vertex colors, and updating normals. And otherwise, that's it for this week. If you want to look at the full list of pull requests that got merged this week, we have them up on the site with links to each of the PRs. We also, if you're looking to get deeper invested in Bevy, have the pull requests that were opened this week and need some review, as well as the issues that were opened and might need some bug fixes. That's it for this week. I have a feeling that next week is going to be a particularly interesting issue of this week in Bevy. So look forward to that.